Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Crime Schoolers Cult. And beer. And beer. <laughs> True crime from the point of view of two crazy Florida men. And I am Florida man Bill. And crazy, Florida man crazy Florida Two man. Paul. Two Paul? Oh. Kind of like thing one and thing two? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a trooper. Oh yeah. See, my, sh- my shirt says so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> hope you guys are ready for a crazy Florida story told by two crazy Florida men. Yep, guilty by because, association. Because... <laughs> because we got one. <laughs> All right, just have to make sure that this, I don't get cold watered. <laughs> ah, where's a straw? God damn it. All right. <laughs> so I have no ado, do you? I do not. No ado. All right, so let's just do the episode. Yeah. We're covering the murder of Sandy Razo. This happened July 5th of 2003 mm. in Tampa, Florida. Uh, police in the suburb of Pinellas Park received a 911 call. The caller was a man who said that his girlfriend was in her car. The window was broken and she was bleeding and she wasn't responsive. Paramedics, and this is early in the morning too. Um, paramedics and police were dispatched and they found a woman who had been shot to death and she was covered with broken glass and lots of blood. And she had been filled with bullets. And she had she had bullet holes in her hands, even in her feet, her chest, one of her arms, as well as a kill shot in the face. Whoa. It was determined that this was point blank range with a twenty two pistol, which is the assassin's choice weapon. Oh. Pretty small round now. That's why I get up close and personal. They're not that loud. Yeah. So Yeah. Looked like a mob hit, but this was the Tampa area, and while Tampa does have a CD underground, this type of hit was out of character for Tampa. Investors, they couldn't determine whether or not this was random or whether or if this woman was targeted. The victim was a gorgeous woman named Sandy Razo. She had recently had a very bad breakup and she had come to Tampa to start over. She was blonde, blue eyes. She was a fitness buff. She was very smart, very outgoing, very friendly. She had gotten a job as a bartender at a very popular nightclub slash grill called the Green Iguana. I heard of that one. I've been there. Mm. <laughs> it's a it's a tiki bar type setting, and it's on West Shore Boulevard. It's a nice area of South Tampa near the downtown on a, a peninsula in between Tampa and Hills, the, the Tampa Bay and Hills, Hillsborough Bay. Mm. She also had a job at the Inferno, which is a very high class nightclub. Um, she did very well for herself and by day she was trying hard to launch a career in modeling. She wanted to settle down and had to have a family. She was 37 years old and divorced. Well, she, she, she hadn't been married, but she had a teenage daughter named Giovanna, but the ex had custody. I'm not sure why Hmm. there's nothing here to indicate that she was a bad mom, but she was picky. She wasn't a gold digger. She wasn't, and she wasn't one to settle. She wanted Mr. Right. And she, she shared a townhouse in Pinellas Park with a roommate named Tony Ponacall. Tony wanted more than just a roommate, but Sandy didn't like him like that. You know, obviously the, the first person that the police looked at is the roommate, Tony, and he agreed to be forensically investigated for any residue of firing a gun. And there was none. 
no powder burns on his hands or his clothes or on anything. And he didn't even own a gun. So he was quickly ruled out as, ruled out as a suspect. Police asked Tony if he knew of anybody who could have wanted Sandy dead. And Tony said yes, and this sparked a crazy-ass investigation. Uh, love triangle, jealousy, lies, manipulation, and, of course, Moida. 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 But before we get into that, we need to go back to the beginning. ba ba ba, ba. Sources are the Cinemaholic, the Sins and Secrets documentary, season two, episode four, Tampa, a little bit of wiki, and CBS Dangerous Liaisons. So as Chris Berman would say, we're going to go back, 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 (laughs) back. Or as I would say, put a knife in that. (laughs) 19-year-old Ashley Humphrey worked at Planet Smoothie in in Brandon, which is just east of South Tampa. She was pretty yet plain. She was naive. She had come from a broken home. Her father was in prison for rape, and her brother was about to go to prison for manslaughter. Her mother wasn't in the picture, but she was just as much of, you know, she was just as much bad news as you know, her brother and her dad. Yeah. Her grandmother was the only one uh, in her family that she had a good re- relationship with, but her grandmother had died recently. Yeah. But Ashley was doing well for herself, considering she had been an honor student in high school. And uh, a lot of setup here. <laughs> a lot of setup before we get to the stuff that we can, you know, oh, yeah. joke about. Before the juice. <laughs> Yeah. He said before the juice and the next line in the notes is planet <laughs> smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> the planet smoothie that she worked off, she, she worked at is off of West Lumsden road and brand and right next to a gym called fitness for 10. Hmm. She, she joined that gym and she was paired with a personal trainer named Tracy Humphrey. Uh, Tracy was a popular guy. He was 37 years old. He was a big guy. He was ripped. He's six, three had women swooning all over him. And he also used steroids, (laughs) but he had a reputation for, you know, if you're, if you're a personal trainer, I think that using steroids should be a fireable offense. Oh yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be training anybody if you're on steroids, period. It just, no. Right. It probably was a fireable offense, but they probably just didn't know. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. (laughs) But uh, he he had a reputation as being a nice, calm, and tender guy. You know, he was the nice guy. Uh, He began training Ashley, and, and she was starting to see results. And he even got her set up with hairstyling appointments with his best friend who was a hairstylist named Hector Hector Ador, uh, Adorno. Hmm. Adorno. Italian? Um, or his, Hispanic? Um, Latino. It could be, yeah, Latino. Um, Tracy would impress Ashley by telling her about his past. and He had been an Armani underwear model in Italy. He played football for the University of Iowa, and he even played in the Rose Bowl. He also played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he was also Tom Cruise's bodyguard at one time. Ooh. Yeah. Tom Cruise. Ooh. Ashley was smitten, and the relationship quickly became more than just trainer trainee. Hmm. Uh, It's really funny because in the documentary, at that point, it says they started more doing more than pumping iron, <laughs> and you know the you know those weight racks that uh, that has the little, the little thing with the the rectangular weights on them with the little thing that sticks through the middle and you lift them up and down. Yeah, it had the little the little hole going in and out of the. <laughs> um, the uh, <laughs> I was just and, like, did they really just go there? <laughs> yeah, you know, some of these film directors are just gotta throw in these uh these optics and stuff like that to kind of you know persuade people into 
the right frame of mind where they intend him to go. <laughs> I mean, if I was going to be so creative they, like Stanley Kubrick, I probably would have done the same thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not knocking him. I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and it almost got past me. I was, I was just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, back up, back up. Did I see what I think I just saw? <laughs> <laughs> So um, they began dating and sleeping together, and they began they wound up moving in together, and they got married on July fourth, two thousand three. They had been together since November two thousand two. Ashley, according to Hector, was not Tracy's typical type of woman. He liked sexy bartender types and strippers, and like I said, um, Ashley was just was just um, plain and naive. Random aside, I saw a photo of Ashley, both this is online and on, on the documentary. Yeah. But, um, I, I saw a photo of Tracy lying on the floor, literally bench pressing Ashley. What? <laughs> yeah. And she, her body was perfectly straight too. Whoa. It's a strong dude. <laughs> wow. So, um, what do they have to do with Sandy and her murder? You might be asking yourself. Hmm. Well, remember when I said that Sandy was tr- uh, trying to get a modeling gig by day and working the bars at night? Yeah. Well, the gym was Tracy's day gig, and he also worked bars at night, specifically the Green Iguana. He mm-hmm. was a bouncer there. And he could literally get any woman that he wanted, and he frequently did. And he wanted Sandy, and he got her for a while. They dated for three or four months in 2002, and it was intense months, according to Tracy, as well as until one night the police caught the two of them having sex in his boss's SUV. Ah, not good. If you're having sex in my car, I'm, we're done. That's, that's, that's crossing a line. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, he thought it was funny, but Sandy didn't. The police had seen her naked, and Sandy didn't appreciate the fact that Tony thought that it was so funny. And they got in, into an intense argument, and Sandy got a ride home with somebody else. Mm. Tracy says that he suggested taking time apart, and that he, during that time, he intentionally paraded other women around in front of her. But they allegedly reconciled a few days later, and he then said that they're the relationship like all through it was strictly sex. And he said that Sandy liked to be roughed up during sex. Mm. Yeah. Tracy Humphrey was the man who Tony Ponacall, Sandy's roommate said that, you know, could have wanted Sandy dead. Yeah. Tony handed the police some legal paperwork with a case number from the state's attorney's office. Sandy Razzo had filed assault charges against Tracy Humphrey in December of 2002. She had accused him of raping, kidnapping, and battering her. Wow. And um, there, there, was more, there was more to this story. Friends of Sandy said that um, that shortly after getting back together, they got into yet another argument, and he hit her. He raped her, and he threatened to kill her daughter. He held her at his place for three days, abusing, raping, torturing, threatening, starving, sleep-depriving, and belittling her, belittling her the entire time. And, you know, he, he's probably whacked out on, you know, like like cocaine or something like that. You know, if, if he's sleep-depriving her, that means he's got to stay awake, too. Yep. Yeah. So he's he's... He's probably just whacked out on, you know, like crank or, you know, whatever. Crank or some of these steroids probably freaking contributed to yeah. it. Dude, you're you're pumped up on all this freaking juice and stuff like that. You know, the H, uh, this, you know, growth hormone. Holy crap. Who knows what that stuff can do to you? Yeah, but I do know one thing that... um well, I don't know from firsthand because I've never taken steroids, but apparently if you take steroids, um, your um, endowment decreases. Yeah, you lose your testosterone. <laughs> and so... <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Sandy didn't know what to do because she was um, so distraught and she waited a week before filing charges. So Tr- Tracy was soon arrested and he was actually surprised when it happened. He said, it's like, I didn't do anything wrong. He said they were having a pillow fight playing around and she threw a pillow at him. He caught it and whacked her in the face with it. He said it caught her on the, the side of her eye and it knocked her contact out and she fell face down on the bed. That's a good story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy's sister, Tracy, said that he had raped and beaten Sandy. He had tied her up and squeezed her head in between his legs, and while straddling, he had punched her um, in the face several times, and she did have a a black eye even a week after the assault happened. Mm. A pillow ain't going to do that. No. Unless it's full of rocks or something. Yeah. (laughs) Man. Tracy was charged with assault, which could get him 10 years, and that scared him. He told Hector that he'd kill himself before he went to prison. And there was a trial coming up for Tracy, you know, because of of this um, assault. Yeah. Hmm. So now let's get back to the moider. Moider one. (laughs) All of this made Tracy the prime suspect in the murder, obviously. Mm -hmm. And the police went to talk to Tracy at the fitness center. And when they told him about Sandy's murder, he reacted more like a concerned friend, not, not, not like a murder suspect. <laughs> he said he'd be happy to talk to the police about the murder, but his attorney put the brakes on that because of the active felony battery case against him. Yeah. <sighs> so the investigators went to talk to his brand new bride, 19 year old Ashley. They asked her why they were, um, they they said they okay they told her why they ah, they told her why they were there and Ashley was nervous they asked her how she knew Tracy and she said that she was star his star people at the gym as well as his brand new wife she's 19 and he's 37 yeah it's legal yeah just, just, it's little, legal, just a little weird just a yeah. little weird just a little <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we've had that conversation before on one, on a recent episode. Uh. <laughs> um, the detectives asked long, how long that they had been married, and she said since July fourth. Well, Sandy was murdered on July fifth. Mm. Yeah, they had got they had gotten married. They'd actually had like I mean, there was no elaborate honeymoon or anything like that. They had a, a little you know, makeshift marriage at the, at the gym. Ah. <laughs> Convenience. Just, just sitting there taking, taking the vows and everything. Tracy's flexing. Do yeah. you take this woman to be your lawfully one away? I do. I'm here to pump you really? up. <laughs> I pick things up and put them down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They asked where Tracy was on the night, the night of Sandy's murder. And Ashley said they were at home watching movies and eating pizza. And a friend had also showed up and joined them. This friend was a woman who was also a pupil of Tracy. Her name was Toby White. And she was mm. around Tra- Tracy's age in, in, in her uh, mid thirties. Mm. But right as the interview was getting going, Tracy came home. He put it into the interview and then the, the phone rang and it was Tracy's attorney and Tracy held the the phone up to Ashley's ear and Ashley repeated what the attorney had said. He told Ashley to say that she didn't want to talk anymore. So they hung up and Ashley said, I don't want to talk anymore. But that, that seems like a, a, a bit of controlling behavior right there from Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just if, if you're holding a phone, it's like what? She's not capable of holding the phone by herself. You know, it's just right, right there. That just seems off. You know, yeah. it's just like as over controlling. Yeah. Someone does that. Yeah. You know, they're about to freaking do something after they hang up the phone. Well, Run. not in this case, but but usually, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the detectives thought that she was holding something back, and but when they ran her information, they found out that she was honor student. 
with absolutely nothing bad on her record. No, no criminal, you know, not even, not even a parking ticket. Not only that, everything that she told investigators before Tracy had showed up and checked out. Pizza delivery did take place that night. The pizza delivery, the, the, the pizza driver described Tracy. Tracy signed the credit card receipt. Now, Brandon is about 40 miles from Pine Island's Park. Pine Island's Park is a suburb of St. Petersburg, clear across Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. And they they also asked Toby White to to come and talk to them, and she did, and she confirmed the alibi. And it seemed like, um, like Tracy, it actually seemed like Tracy did not commit the murder. He had a rock-solid alibi. Proved on several different levels. Yeah. Mm. So this case was all over the Tampa area news, specific, you know, especially in Pinellas Park because Pinellas Park didn't you know, murder didn't really happen in Pinellas Park. Maybe across the river in, you know, Tampa, but yeah. not in Pinellas Park. Maybe up the road a little, a little bit in St. Pete, but not in Pinellas Park. You know, the detectives were stumped, and they looked into Sandy's ex, Derek Hanno. He, and they learned that about their daughter who was living with them. He, you know, he, Giovanna and Derek's new girlfriend, they lived in Daphne, Alabama. There was, there was a custody battle going on and they wondered if Derek had come from Alabama and killed Sandy. Hmm. So the detectives went to Alabama and they questioned Derek and the girlfriend, even Giovanna, as, as well as, you know, people that kn- knew them and they determined that both Derek and his girlfriend were in Alabama. They had, they had been in Alabama for months. They hadn't left the state. So they were, they were ruled out. And not only that, Derek and Sandy were actually cordial with each other, despite the fact that there was a custody d- dispute going on. Mm, yeah. So that's, that's kind of, that's kind of unheard of, but I'm sure it does happen. Well, it, it did happen. It happened in this case, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. So, who done it? What do you think, Paul? Give me your hmm. thoughts. I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning, I'm leaning toward Tracy. Or Tracy okay. had somebody do it. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Maybe. Well, I'm, I'm not going to tell you right now. No, I don't. I'm not going to tell you if you're right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so the the investigation was stalling, and they were worried that the case might go cold. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they got a the police got a, a phone call from Toby White. The plot thickens. Mm. She wanted to meet with them. She wanted to meet with them like now. She was scared. Yeah. Now she had confirmed the pizza and movie story to the police, but yeah, but she con- confessed that she had lied to them. She wasn't even at the house that night with, with Tracy and Ashley. Well, yeah, it, you know, it, it wasn't until July sixth, the day after the murder, that Tracy had pulled her aside at the gym and told her the entire story. Well, it, well, that um. You know, Sandy had been murdered, and he demanded that she confirm their story. He said that if she didn't do it, he didn't know what he'd have to do, and that was a clearly veiled passive-aggressive threat. Mm. I think roughing somebody up, you know, like bamboozling somebody like that in a place of business is also grounds for termination. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't own the place, you're fired. You're fired. So Toby had no choice, or at least she thought she had no choice. Um, Tracy must have been very convincing because Toby also was clean, and he didn't have anything to use against her to blackmail her with. But she was still afraid. She was afraid for her life. He had that to use against her. But yeah, yeah. And after you know calm down for a day or two and everything. So she's like, okay, I'm going to do the right thing. Good on you, Toby. (laughs) (laughs) 
Now, so this clearly pointed to Tracy as a suspect once again. But his alibi still checked out. Cell phone records, credit card receipt, the pizza guy's account. they All of that put Tracy at home the night of the murder. So now what do you think? Uh, the pizza guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling Domino's Pizza and Hitman Services. How can I help you? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh. Your pizza there in 30 minutes or less. Your hit done in an hour or less. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or your money back. <laughs> 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 so police looked at the cell phone records and they noticed they noticed something. They yeah, they're like, okay, we maybe we missed something when we looked at the phone records. So they look at it again and they realized that they had in fact missed something. Hmm. They noticed that during the the night over the span of like hours, um there were lots of calls to and from Ashley. Now Ashley was supposedly at home eating pizza and watching movies with Tracy and Toby. So why would he call somebody who was sitting on the sofa right next to him? Hmm. 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 <laughs> that wasn't planned. <laughs> that was not planned at all. A cloud thickens. <laughs> uh, Tracy was, in fact, home. But... um but Ashley was not. Cell tower pings came from a tower near the Green Iguana for several hours. Sandy was working there that night. And when she got off work, Ashley's phone started pinging to other towers. From West Shore Boulevard to Highway 92, across the Gandhi Bridge to Highway 694, to Pine Alice Park, to Sandy's townhouse. <laughs> then back to 694, back across the Gandhi Bridge, to the Selma Expressway, and into Brandon, and then back to Tracy in her place. Wow. <sighs> you know, not a good idea to call your conspirator in the um, process of committing no. crime. No. I mean, I could say that I just let, I just spoiled it, but it's pretty freaking obvious at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, investigators didn't think that this added up though. Cause remember she was squeaky clean and they did more digging and they found out about Ashley's rough, rough upbringing. Not that that meant anything, but it's just like, okay, well, who knows? Yeah. I don't even know why. I mean, you know, lots of people have bad upbringings. They don't go kill somebody. True. That's for somebody so, who just can't, can't let something go. Just let it go. Yeah. yeah. Let it go. Let yeah, it go. apparently apparently they haven't seen Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> the pizza never bothered me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now we're going back to Tracy. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going back to Tracy's courtship of Ashley, if you want to call it that. It was more like grooming. Yeah, he told her about the assault charges and about the uh, upcoming trial. He said he said they were bogus, and Sandy was just a psycho. <laughs> she was an old girlfriend, and when he tried to leave her, she beat the shit out of herself and blamed it on him. I thought it was a pillow. Right. That's what I thought. I thought yeah. Yeah. Now he's changing his story. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> police um police pictures of of Sandy, you know, victim pictures. Yeah. Show two dark black eyes, bruises on her forehead, as well as what appears to be broken blood vessel spots all over her face. I mean, I think that's what it is. It's tiny, like red spots, like all over her face, mm -hmm. and like almost like ac like acne, but not raised. It's just like you know, just red spots. Yeah. 
the bro- uh, broken blood vessels, maybe? Yeah, broken capillaries, blood vessels, uh, contusions. Um, yeah. yeah, especially on the face, like around the noses and stuff like that. That's where all the small capillaries are and stuff like that. And when those burst, yeah. yeah. She she also had um like dark you know nasty looking bruises on her forehead, um, but in her nose in the picture her nose also appears to be bent, Ooh, broken nose. And just keep oh, in mind this is a this is a full week after the assault, you know after wow. after her ordeal. Yeah, but but it was a pillow. <laughs> no, <laughs> or or. Or she did that to herself. I'm sorry. You know, nobody is going to fuck themselves up that bad. No. No. Unless, I don't care unless, if yeah, you, the only way somebody could do that to themselves is if they were absolutely under the influence of like okay. bath salts. <laughs> yeah. Or something really heavy. Yeah. I mean, you're you're not just going to, you know, I mean, if you're if you're sober and you get pissed off to the point to where you're going to start beating yourself, you're not going to do that much damage to yourself. You're not. Mm-hmm. You're going to avoid your nose at all cost. Oh yeah. You're going to avoid your eyes at all cost. You might punch yourself in the lip or something, mm-hmm. but you're not going to hit yourself repeatedly to give yourself, you know, to have the broken capillaries and all that stuff. Correct. You, you, yeah. You're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, at worst, you might if you're if you're beating the shit out of yourself. You the at the worst you might get is a broken lip and a bruise. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to do all the other damage. Yeah, yeah. You know, just self, just your self-preservation instinct is going to keep you away from your eyes and your nose. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but investigators needed more evidence, and they came up with a very risky plan. Now, if this plan went bad, it could lead to even more moida. Oh, he does. They wanted Toby to wear a wire and to go talk to Tracy and try to get a confession. Now, Tracy had already started suspecting her, you know, of of possibly talking to the police. He had started hugging her, like, you know, and patting her down. Ooh. Trying to, trying to see if she was wearing a wire. Yeah. He had never really been like physical with her as far as like touching her and stuff like that before, other than like helping her, you know, exercise or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they weren't like that. They weren't an item. They were just, they were just friends. Uh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so they, um, concealed the wire like very well. And they gave her a fake subpoena for her, you know, for her testimony. Mm-hmm. And then they they sent her to talk to Tracy and Ashley at the gym. They came outside, and there was an unmarked police car there in the parking lot in case the meeting went bad. Mm. And they were also there filming. And you can actually see the actual video online. Um, The the three meet in the parking lot, and Toby explains that the cell phone tower records, the cell, the cell, the, the, the cell tower records indicated that Ashley was en route to Sandy's place and, and, and back the night of the murder. And they, they wanted to question Toby about her initial testimony. Uh, Tracy and Ashley freaked out and he's just like, um, and Tracy's just like, you know, he, he says, well, I, I had hoped that I had, I had really been hoping that that wasn't, you know, that that wasn't, you know, wouldn't have come up. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, their their reactions. You know, at at one point she she started just saying something and just like um, what 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 did she say? I didn't write this part down or I didn't type this, but um, she's like, you know, Toby said it's like a it it tracked her all the way from you know from here all the way over to Pine Alice Park, and mm-hmm. then um, and then Ashley said. Where she was murdered? <laughs> mm. Oh, dumbass. Damn. <sighs> I'm glad criminals are stupid, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, they always slip at some point in time. They always slip. 
Ja. Hm. So their reactions gave all the evidence that they needed, and it proved that both of them were involved in the murder. They now needed to tie Tracy or Ashley to the twenty two pistol. And they spoke to everybody they could find who knew Ashley and Tracy. Now, Ashley's mother's boyfriend said that Ashley had asked to borrow a gun from him, and he had loaned her one, a twenty, a Ruger twenty two caliber pistol. <laughs> he said, oh, at the time, I didn't think anything of it. But then, you know, hindsight, it did seem kind of odd because Ashley just wasn't really all that. It was never really interested in guns. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, just uh, man, it makes me wonder. I mean, just to come out and say something that dumb, yeah, it just makes me think <laughs> that it just uh, meth is bad and good. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well. If if I if I were a betting man, <laughs> I would bet that Ashley's mother and her boyfriend lived in Gibsonton. Oh yeah, it, it doesn't say though. <laughs> a circus town. <laughs> well, it's not just a circus town. That that whole area is just really, really low, very, very low income. Like mm-hmm. the nasty you know like old beat up trailer parks and stuff like that it's not just the the circus town it's just the whole area is just bad yeah yeah it's not like uh <sighs> they call that the harlem of florida yeah it's so crazy because when you drive through that area you see these like very really tall signs with like a sign on it probably about 10 or 12 feet up and mm-hmm. the signs say like this is this is how high a storm surge can be during a hurricane like 10 to 12 feet whoa coming off of tampa bay not off of the not off of the gulf of mexico itself but tampa bay that's Damn. freaking crazy yeah well i guess it i guess it makes sense because if you have a storm surge coming through from the gulf of mexico it the the force gets all like you know bottled into the into tampa bay so i guess i guess it makes sense yeah i'm surprised it wouldn't be more than that i mean i've seen storm surges 20 know 15 20 sometimes even 30 feet depending on the storm especially a cat five yeah Mm. cat fives don't really don't really hit tampa very often yeah the the stronger ones don't i think i i would i'd bet that probably the way it sticks out is probably why you know the larger hurricanes don't hit um over brevard county yeah the the way it sticks out like that you know, it does the same thing over in the Tampa area. It sticks mm-hmm. out like that, which means that it's shallower, which probably steers the hurricane away. Yeah. Like Hurricane Ian, for example, was headed straight for Tampa, but it it made wound up making landfall in Fort Myers uh, about two hours south. Mm-hmm. Hurricane Andrew, when it was initially making its approach to Florida, was headed straight line, a bee line towards Cocoa Beach. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, it, like, yeah, the, the winds had already started to pick up. And then all of a sudden, at the very last minute, it took, it turned south and, and it basically almost tore did. up Miami. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there, there's something, there's, there's definitely something in something that keeps the, um, the, the more powerful hurricane, the deeper churning hurricanes away from the space coast. And I think, I think there's something similar over in the Tampa area. Yeah. Yeah, because they don't. I mean, the smaller hurricanes get through, but the bigger ones yeah, usually I, don't. Yeah, yeah, it's a conspiracy. We'll uh-huh. talk about that on the sound. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> it's planned, man. Whatever, whatever, whatever yeah. it is is natural. <laughs> oh yeah, whatever it yeah. is is natural. And, yeah. and you got MacDill Air Force Base right there at the tip of that peninsula that I was talking about, where the green mm-hmm. iguana is. You know, that's in Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. So, um. It makes sense. You know, Patrick Air Force Base over over in Satellite Beach. Would would they put an Air Force Base right next to the ocean if they if they thought there was like a chance that a Category Five could get through? No, they wouldn't. Oh no, no, yeah. So there's definitely something. Oh, it's, it's not Patrick Air Force Base anymore. It's Patrick Space Force Base. Yeah, Space Force. 
Yeah. yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, but I, I digress, but still inter- it, interesting, interesting to talk about. And I never really thought about Tampa having the same type of like re- repelling, you know, natural, natural repelling ability to repel a hurricane, a large hurricane away that, um, that the space coast has, but it definitely ha- happens that large hurricanes don't hit Tampa. You know, the big powerful ones don't hit Tampa. Yeah. They'll, they'll either hit north or they'll hit south. Just same, same thing as the powerful hurricanes over there, like in Brevard County, where I'm from. Um, uh, they don't hit there. Yeah. In my entire life, Brevard County has been hit by two category three hurricanes. And that's the most powerful that's ever hit there. Matthew. And I think back in 2004, when like six big storms hit Florida all at yeah, the same like, time, one of them, yeah, like one Charlie, of them made landfall in Brevard. Charlie but I think that was, and... I think Charlie, um, there was a, a female's name can't remember there was a big dragon statue at the tip of Merritt island that there the southern tip of Merritt island a huge statue that had been there for decades and this one particular hurricane back in 2004 knocked it down ah that sucked but i can't remember which one that was but those are the only two category three hurricanes that i can remember in my lifetime ever hit in brevard county yeah huh. but anyway hashtag but i digress <laughs> <laughs> they they weren't sure if they had enough information to arrest Tracy for the homicide and they they and they wanted to arrest them both at the same time so they dug into his past and what they found out was he was a criminal with a violent criminal history you know lots of these crimes were committed in other states and they didn't they didn't come up when Sandy had filed the charges against him because they were <laughs> Other st- other states, yeah. He had abused at least eight women, eight that there are charges for, and like we always say, I'm sure that there's more. You know, those are just the ones that came forward. Yeah. Um. And he had done lots of times f- for for these over the years. There was no way that he could have been a model or a collegiate football player or pro football player or Tom Cruise's bodyguard. You know it. He was full of shit. Mm -hmm. Plus, he was on probation, and a conviction for assaulting Sandy would have violated that conviction. You know, violated the probation, meaning that he was done like dinner. Oh yeah, yeah. He he had to have Sandy killed before his trial, which was less than a month away at that point, or he would be going away for a very long time. Hmm. So they could arrest him for a violation of probation. And on the days leading up for, to the murder, after Ashley had gotten the the Ruger, yeah. um, Tracy and Ashley had gone to a firing range. So there's the violation. Convicted yep. felon. He's not allowed to have firearms or ammo or be around it. Yep. So officers arrested Ashley for Sandy's murder. And Tracy was arrested on federal firearms charges (laughs) (laughs) and violation of probation. (laughs) (laughs) When Ashley was being interrogated, she was stone cold silent, like not saying a word, like a hardened criminal. And she was likely coached by Tracy or, or even brainwashed. Like if you get arrested, this is what you do. Yeah, you know, when when they told her that she would be charged with murder, she simply said, "Get my attorney." Yeah, and they're like, "What do you mean?" They're like, "My attorney, get him, get him here." Mm. She's like, "They're like, okay, but why?" She's like, "I didn't do this. Get my attorney." <laughs> so this 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 tiny little this tiny little thing, you know, naive and all that stuff and everything, you know, is go- going up against <laughs> a freaking detective and holding her ground. Yeah. <laughs> she was coached. Yeah. Yeah. Trained, brainwashed, whatever. But the detectives were ready and they showed Ashley Tracy's rap sheet as well as photos of the woman that he abused and also told her what he had done to Sandy. 
And um, they told her that he wasn't an underwear model, a hawk and a, a, a Hawkeye, a buccaneer, or a bodyguard for a Scientology superstar actor or anything else <laughs> other than just a freaking piece of shit criminal. Uh, damn. And that was uh, not not to mention all the crap that he had done. Other, than, you know. Oops. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, but she wouldn't budge. Uh, she was standing by. John, Travol- John Travolta is going to come kidnap me after that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you just wait, Scientology. We're going to, in due time, <laughs> yeah. we will cover Scientology at some point. Not one of the ones that I'm looking forward to doing, but uh, yeah, yeah, we're all of a sudden John Travolta. Hey man, you want to come take a ride on my, in my plane? <laughs> <laughs> no, John, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's when I pack my parachute. <laughs> yep. I don't care how that plane's going down. I'm gonna be out of it before it hits it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But she wouldn't budge. But. You know, Ashley wouldn't budge. She was standing by her man, but they had been holding something back. And when they threw their wild card on the table, Ashley spilled the beans. (laughs) They told her that his best friend and her hairdresser, Hector, was also Tracy's lover. And he had been involved in a sexual relationship with him the entire time that they were together. Ooh. So she spilled the beans, not because of because of finding out that he had lied about everything that she told her, that, that he had told her about his past and all that stuff. Not because of that, not because of the fact that she found out that he had um, like tortured a woman for three days straight and had like abused several, you know, like like eight at least eight others. Not yeah. not because of finding all that out. Found out because she she had been. Uh, she had been cheated on, you know, he, he had cheated on her with a, with a guy. That's, yeah. that's, yeah, that's, that's, oh, what, that that's would, what shit that, Yeah. That's kind of, yeah. Degrading for a woman. That piss. That would piss. <laughs> off. I, you, th- you think that made her upset? She was upset. <laughs> 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 she said that she said that Tracy had first started started plotting to kill Sandy several months earlier and began incorporating her into it by having her spy on Sandy, never ha- even having her buy software and things to to track her. He sent her on surveillance missions under his orders to kill Sandy if she got the chance. Oh. She initially didn't want anything to do with this, but Tracy told her that killing Sandy was the only way that they could be together because he was going to be going to prison more than likely if Sandy didn't die. (sighs) He had manipulated Ashley into falling deeply in love with him. I mean, that was his whole plan. He was right. just looking for somebody that he could brainwash. Didn't matter who it was. And apparently it didn't matter what gender it was either. No, obviously. <laughs> yeah. He if needed some... somebody to be completely loyal and in love with yeah. who regardless. Yep. It just had to be somebody young and naive and Ashley mm-hmm. came along at the right time. If a young and naive little you know, little gay gay kid had come in, he he would have done the same thing. Mm. Although yeah. might not have been able to marry him because um, I don't think gay marriage was legal in Florida in 2004, 2004. or 2003, yeah, what, sure. whatever. 
I don't think it yeah. was. I, 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 it was coming soon, but I don't think it was at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I think that wasn't until like 2009, 2010, maybe. Yeah. yeah it happened. It happened during the Obama administration. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. So it. it so I, so maybe he was looking for a girl specifically because he wouldn't have been able to completely dig into a guy because he wouldn't be able to marry a guy at that point. Yeah. Okay. So he was looking for a girl. But he he told her that he couldn't he couldn't have killed Sandy and Or, excuse me. Uh, he he even told her that if he had if he couldn't have Sandy killed, he would kill himself. <laughs> His claws were so deep into San, into Ashley that you know she she didn't even stand a chance. I mean, I'm not justifying what she did, but I'm just saying you know she she her her brain was totally mush at that point. Yeah, you know. So on July 5th, Ashley disguised herself and went to the green iguana with her gun. Well. Her her mom's boy her mom's boyfriend's gun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the couple who may or may not have been meth heads. <laughs> yeah. Um okay. she was planning on ambushing Sandy in the parking lot after she got off work. But <laughs> she fell asleep while waiting. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she woke up right as Sandy was pulling a um was pulling away so she followed sandy home like i said across west west shore across the 92 the gandy bridge 694 into um into pinellas park um she followed sandy home sandy put her car in the the um in the garage and um sandy and ashley had blocked the driveway she got out and she went up to sandy's car uh, she broke the window with her with her pistol and opened fire. Eight shots total, all hitting Sandy. Like oh. not one of them missed. Whoa. Yeah, even at even at point blank r- at range, it's still coming for at least one or two um, mm-hmm. bullets to miss if you're just like opening fire like that. Even for somebody that knows what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Not one of the bullets missed. Ah. <laughs> Hmm. She then bolt, she then bolted back to Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I meant let's go to let's go to Brand let's go to Brandon. <laughs> Brandon is the Brandon is the name of the town, people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, it's a pretty 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 nice town too. It is, it, yeah, really nice, really nice. Well, on um, east of I seventy five, it's a nice town. West of it, not so much. Well, west of it is like the eastern side of South Tampa, which isn't all that great. Mm. So, yeah, and the traffic, in Brandon, sucks too. Oh yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Oh man. Hmm. Got stories of traffic there, man. That Brandon into mm-hmm. into uh, River Riverview. Riverview, yeah. Nobody knows that, how to drive there. It's like a whole different world. It's like you've left, you've you've drove in through a time warp or some weird time thing, and everybody drives differently. It's not mm-hmm. far from the steering wheel being on the opposite side of the vehicle, but it's like really, <laughs> people, stay in your lane. Yeah. <laughs> So the state offered Ashley a deal. She pleads guilty to second degree manslaughter and she gets 25 years in prison. This avoids a life sentence with death penalty. In exchange, she testifies against Tracy. With her testimony, they could get first, first degree murder charge for Tracy, which gets that piece of shit off the, off the street. Now, honestly, you know, I think 25 years, I mean, did she commit cold blooded murder? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a lot of, have gotten off, you know, with less time. Yeah, you know, people that would have been more likely to offend as well. Yeah, you know, than more likely than she would have. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I think that I I think that 
without Tracy, she never commits murder. Oh, and yeah. I think that what, once picture, she gets out, yeah. huh? Yeah, if 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 Tracy was never in the picture, they would have never knew each other. I'm sure that never, right. nothing would have like happened like this. And even if they gave her like ten years or fifteen years or something like that, she gets out. She's not going. She's not going to kill anybody else. No. She probably never touched a gun again. Well, she wouldn't be able to because she's a felon. But oh, yeah, still, yeah. you know. Yeah. But um, so Valentine's Day, 2006, three years later, trial begins. Prosecutors open by detailing Tracy's criminal history and Sandy's ass- assault charges against him. The defense countered that Tracy was 40 miles away and couldn't have done it. And there was no concrete evidence that he had orchestrated the murder. Prosecutors put you know, responded by putting Ashley on the stand. Um, and she was not the same person. You know, this is three years, well, like two and a half years later. And she did not look like the same person. I mean, she had put on like 60 pounds Ooh. and everything. Wow. She, um, she looked, you know, she, she, it, in the video, I'm not laughing, but in the video, she looked, it looked like she had like acne scars all over her face and everything, which was kind of odd for somebody in their twenties that yeah. didn't have them when they were 19, huh. you know, but, um, it was, she was definitely not the same person, hmm. but she talked about how hard she fell for him almost immediately and that he had started badgering her about killing Sandy and she went all, along with it because she loved him. Of course, she's 19. He wasn't, yeah. you know, if he if he runs this exact same, if a naive, say, 30-year-old woman walks in um, and he runs this exact same thing on her, she's not falling for it. Yeah. A 19-year-old, they haven't lived yet. Exactly. You know, I mean, yeah. well, she, she, you know. And plus she had had such a rough upbringing that she was, you know, she was just looking for somebody to love her, you know? Yeah. 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 So Not, yeah. desperate for that, uh, that, uh, needing somebody that. And, and because of his awesome. age, there might've been some. Yeah. There, because of, because of his age, there might've been some daddy issues there too. Yeah. In fact, I'm sure of it. Hmm. Trace, oh, this is great. This is crazy. This is great. This is hilarious. <laughs> um, Tracy took the stand saying that Ashley was the one who wanted Sandy dead. It was her violent upbringing that had turned her into a jealous partner with deadly aspirations. <laughs> you know, he play, he plays the victim the entire time, and it's pathetic. He's like, he's like, the state of Florida wants, you know, wants to hold, he wants to say that this is my fault. When it's actually her fault. Yeah, you know, he's he's just like being a little bitch and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um this big bad bouncer bodybuilder boogerhead <laughs> was he was nothing but a gutless coward. He was too chicken shit to get his own hands dirty, and he was pretending to be afraid of a five foot three little girl who weighed hundred and ten pounds soaking wet. Well, at the at the time, she yeah. weighs a lot more than that now. But still, <laughs> it's like it, I'm. I was watching the video, you know, some of the video from this and everything, and it's just like, God, I. How can you even call yourself a, a man at this point? I'm not. You know, it's just like it's just like, oh well, you know, she she did it, and I was, you know, I I I had to go along with it. I had to let her do what she wanted to do. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. He was a wuss. Yeah, he was a wuss. I mean, he was a wuss to get probably kicked my ass, but he was still a wuss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I think it ultimately broke down to he was just petrified of going to prison for a long time. Yeah. So he so he was trying to do anything that he could do to um you know, like even even if he makes himself look like a total freaking wuss and all that stuff, he's going to do anything that he had to do to avoid going back to, to, you know, to prison. Yeah, I think he was scared about it. Maybe maybe he was somebody's bitch at some point prior. <laughs> yeah. so, somebody yeah. that was much bigger. Yeah. <laughs> like the um, like um, John Coffee in the Green Mile, but 
a not so friendly John Coffee. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> absorbable. <laughs> you dropped the soap there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to pick it up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But February twenty fourth, both sides arrested. Tracy was found guilty of first degree murder after only three hours of deliberation by the jury. <laughs> he got life in prison with no possibility of parole. Mm. And he was, you know, he was so scared to go back to prison, but now he'll never leave it. <laughs> He's in the South Bay Correctional Facility in between the Everglades and Lake Okeechobee off of Highway 27, right next to a massive sugar processing plant. Yeah, I know where that's at. I do too. I've, I drive, I drive by it every week, every day, pretty much. <laughs> um, that's that's, oh, that's, the, um, that's that's very remote. That's and which is good because yeah. Well, South Bay is a, a sleepy little town, but yeah. um, but you know, it, there's there's also that correctional facility over in Moorhaven. Mm-hmm. Like on the other side of Lake Okeechobee, like p- past Clewiston, um, Tyler Hadley is there. Mm. He's the guy that um, do you know who he is? He's the guy that killed his um, his parents, and then threw a party at his house while his parents were dead in their bedroom. What the hell? Yeah, he's, somebody will cover at some point. That's a crazy ass story. Yeah, but um, but he's there, and then you got this chucklehead that's in South Bay. <laughs> but what I what I liked about the um about the fact that he's, the, the location of the one that um Tracy is at it's like when when those um when those sugar when they burn off the you know when they burn off the um the the previous crop of sugar cane yeah off of off of the off of the the, the sugar cane fields and everything it stinks to mm. high heaven like almost as bad as a paper mill oh and I just, I just hope they open his window whenever the <laughs> sugar plant does that. <laughs> right. Uh... <laughs> uh, when they're burning that, when they're burning that stuff off, when that mixes with like a fog, like in the morning, oh, it's like, yeah. it's Ooh. like whiteout conditions, like like snow, like in, you know, like in Wyoming or something like that. Mm-hmm. They're whiteout conditions. You cannot see ten feet. You can't see ten feet in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> it i've been in white out snow conditions before and that's exactly what it reminded me of the first time i was in that down there um yeah you know you know going going through the everglades but <sighs> on march 10th of 2006 ashley was sentenced to 25 years and is at gadsden correctional facility in quincy florida now that is way up in the panhandle Mm -hmm. and it's a um it's on a county that's as far north as you can get like the county borders with um alabama alabama yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) either Uh either alabama or georgia one or the other i'm not sure but Uh um but they couldn't be further apart from each other (laughs) oh i know yeah yeah yeah, because between between South Bay and and um, Gadsden, you've got uh, Rayford, and then you've got um, Coleman. Stark. Yeah, Stark. Well, Stark, and Ray- Stark and Rayford are yeah. the same thing. Yeah. But, and you've got um, Coleman, which is a federal, federal, yeah, federal facility. <clears throat> first time that um, I had ever heard Rayford Prison referred to as Rayford Prison instead of Stark, because I had, growing up, it was Stark. You know, yeah. that's where old Sparky is. But um doing an episode really early on and it was like an old ass episode. Um there it was a it was an old case from like the eighteen hundreds. It was a crazy ass case and everything. <laughs> the, the 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 Ashley gang. Oh, and I did I did that one I did that one with a fill in host because Todd was sick. And um and this is the first time that I'd ever heard Stark referred to as Rayford. <laughs> and I'm like Rayford Prison. I don't know. must because because John Ashley had escaped from there like multiple times. Are yeah. you familiar with that story? The, the Ashleys, the yeah. Ashley gang. Yeah. But um, 
he had escaped from there. And I made the comment, I was like, must not have been that strong of a prison. <laughs> it was the freaking Florida State Penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, Ray, Rayford, Rayford and Stark are the same freaking place. Yeah, I don't know why it has two different names like that, but it does. They're the same place, <laughs> and, huh. and it's like, yeah, it's just like I. So I, I kind of once I realized that they were the same place, I felt kind of stupid saying, "Oh, it must not have been that <laughs> that secure of a prison." Because <laughs> uh. even back in the 1800s, the big federal penitentiaries that they had were still pretty escape proof, but. Yeah, but John Ashley was just good at escaping. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that was a good episode, even though it had a fill-in. Um, and even though it was still like that early on. Yeah. Um, CKCB history. <laughs> but huh. anyway, but that that's it. Nice short episode for you. <laughs> yeah, still over an hour. It don't matter. Yeah, good. A little bit over an hour. But, yeah. <laughs> but still, I mean... Yeah. I don't know, I'm starting to realize that, you know, if an episode takes two hours, that's fine and dandy, but they don't have to. As long as you right. get all the information out, it doesn't matter how long it is, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's got to be engaging. Yeah. Gotta Which it was. People. Yeah. Yep. That was a, that was yeah. a crazy ass story. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I, I, I thought know, he would, was the one that pulled the trigger, but now he found a, he found, uh, a, he found a minion to do it. He found it. He found a Ashley. <laughs> yeah. But, um, oh, that's why I was like, why the hell did the Ashley case pop into my head? It was because the girl's name was Ashley. That's why <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was sitting there. I'm like, wondering how the hell did that come up? I haven't thought yeah. about that episode in a long time, <laughs> but, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> but <sighs> Yeah, uh, this episode would have you know that Valentine's Day thing that we're part of. Yeah, this one would have been a good one to do that for that one too. Although I don't think we could have made a fifteen minute episode out of this story. Mm. There's too many parts to the story. Yeah. Well, there, I don't know. There was a lot of parts in the um, Dahlia story as well. True. Yeah, we managed we managed to get it done in fifteen minutes. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's okay. not our episode. That's not our episode in our feed about Dahlia DiPolito. That's the one we, we told a condensed version of the same thing for um, a Valentine's Day uh, multi podcast collaboration. So, <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thanks a lot for listening, everybody. I uh, appreciate the hell out of it. You know, check us out on our socials, follow us there, engage with us. Um, you know, we you know we like to talk, obviously. Yes, we do, because otherwise we wouldn't podcasters. be podcasters. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. All the socials are linked in the episode description. And um, if you like us, tell a friend. If you hate us, tell an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, heck yeah, people. Either way, tell somebody. Tell somebody. Like, share, we comment. We have a cool Subscribe, follow, right. and listen to wherever you listen to your podcasts. Well, you don't need to tell them to listen to it where they listen to podcasts because they already are. Well, it depends on what they listen to. They might be not listening <laughs> to our podcast. <laughs> they then they wouldn't hear you say that. Podcast. But the, the, you saying that's not going to be on somebody else's podcast unless unless it's on yours. No, well, <laughs> ours. <laughs> no, yours. Your podcast. <laughs> The seance. (laughs) Or this one. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh, man. (laughs) Cross-marketing. Yeah, there we go. But anyway, yeah, definitely. And yeah, we have a core group of people. I mean, our our episodes get the same amount of listens every week. We have a core group of people. We, We love every single one of you. Just tell your friends. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> please you know grow the tell show everybody. yeah tell everybody yeah we because yeah, it's obvious that we have a v- core group of, of listeners because every episode it, it grows a little bit each week but still the the main you know bulk of people that listen happen you know within the first week week and a half and everything and all the episodes wind up you know at about the the same amount of listens so it's just like there's a we have a core group of diehards mm-hmm. so 
we need you you guys to tell all your friends. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget to comment. If you got any questions, if you got you know, you want to plug something like, hey, what about this or what about that? Or, or um, you know, it, it gives us fuel and ammunition for uh, uh, future shows and possibly yeah, if you want to a particular story and stuff. So, you know, we've we've had several episodes that have been like um, listener suggested. So I mean, we're we're game for that. CKCB podcast at Gmail dot com or, you know, you can comment on YouTube. You can comment on Apple, although it takes like a like a month for a comment on Apple to, to get up there. And we only have two comments on um, Apple so far. And one of them says boring. And that's from um, T Marie 13. I know she's listening. <laughs> Love you. T Marie 13. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> she gave us a one star said we were boring. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, until next week, later, later on.